It is so pretty outside, finally. I decided to just come out here and sit on the deck and uh, enjoy the day. It's just, just beautiful, finally. It's been a tough winter here in Alabama, I wanna tell you. Just the other day, as uh, I'm sure most all of you already know, especially if you're in America, uh, once again, the uh, House of Representatives betrayed the American people, as did the Senate, and they voted for this debacle, sending 60 or $65 billion more to Ukraine, and I believe a few other uh, billion, I forget the exact number, the whole bill was like $95 billion dollars, it was to the the majority of it was for Ukraine. Some of it was for Israel. Uh, some of it was for uh, Indo the uh, Indo Pacific operations. And I talked about that in the last video how it how it passed in the House. Uh, every Democrat voted for it. Enough Republicans voted for it, and it was fully supported, of course, by uh, Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House. And some of you have undoubtedly seen images or videos, and I talked about it, of House members as soon as the vote was tallied. A lot of the members of the House of Representatives, these Americans, started waving Ukrainian flags. I want to talk more about that in just a minute, but what an outrage. What a, what a sucker punch, a punch in the gut, an utter betrayal to every American that a, a congressional representative on the floor of the House of Representatives would actually be flying the Ukrainian flag. Do we need to ask the obvious? Who, whose side are you on? Who do you actually represent? That's kind of a loaded question. It's a little rhetorical, of course, because we know that most every member of Congress is up for the highest bidder. Uh, they're all for sale, pretty much, with rare exception, they will vote the way that their uh, benefactors wish for them to vote. That's just how it works in Washington, folks. And what you or I want as American citizens uh, doesn't really enter into the equation. Unless, of course, we could uh, pad their pockets, uh, you know, with bribes or kickbacks or what have you, then they might vote the way that uh, that we want them to. But... That's not happening. Of course, we already fund them with our tax dollars, but you've got to give them, you got to really grease their palm to get them to vote the way that you want them to vote. And of course, these huge uh, defense contractors and all of the special interest and the, the lobbyists, uh, they will spare no expense to buy a politician and get them to vote according to how they want them to vote. But this was nothing but an utter betrayal. But what I failed to mention in the last video about that is that the same day that the House took this vote uh, to send more of our money uh, to Ukraine, uh, ostensibly for a war that they will not win, Russia is going to win this war. And these people are not stupid. They know that. And I explained in the last video where this money is going. It's just it's just a money laundering operation. That's all that it is. But anyway, the same day that this happened, the Senate uh, passed an extension of Section 702 uh, of the FISA Act. You should know what the FISA Act is. And this allows the United States government to spy on us without a warrant. This is life in America today, folks. This, this bill also contains new language massively expanding <clears throat> how they can spy on us. So this is the reality of, the, of life in America today. If you're an American citizen, the Senate just voted once again to basically reauthorize or continue uh, the FISA Act. This all started back during the first term after 9-11 of George W. Bush when uh, Congress passed the FISA Act. It simply means that the, the, the American government can spy on the American people without obtaining a warrant. That That is chilling, is it not? How do you believe the framers and the founders of the United States would, would feel about this? What do you think they would have to say about this? 
To call it unconstitutional would be too kind of an observation, would it not? How does it make you feel that your government is potentially spying on you and they don't have to ask anybody's permission? They don't have to go to a judge and get a warrant. They can just do it. It kind of ties in with Biden's actions against TikTok, which I am opposed to. Now, I understand there's a lot of trash on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. I don't know much about it. I know generally about it. There is a lot of trash on TikTok. There's a lot of trash on Facebook. There's a lot of trash on Twitter. There's a lot of trash on the internet. But this, in my opinion, sets a precedent. If the president of the United States can shut down TikTok, what else can he shut down? Could he shut down my channel? Well, why not? If he deems it a threat to the security of the United States, certainly he could shut it down. He could shut down any website using that sort of flawed logic that this is bad for America or it's bad for the American people or they don't need to see these things. So we're just going to shut it down. This is a terrible precedent. But what what is so egregious about this this action by the Senate. And of course you had good patriots like Rand Paul and Mike Lee and, and others who uh, came out against uh, this vote. But the Senate still said, no, we're going to uh, expand our spying capabilities on our citizens. Think about that a minute. The very people they deign to represent they're just going to start spying on us willy-nilly. If they want to, they're going to do it, and they don't have to go get permission to do it either anymore. This is a flagrant violation of the Constitution. This is a, very, this is a flagrant violation of every principle of freedom and liberty, the very pillars of our existence in America. I'm going to spy on you, and I ain't going to ask permission before I spy on you. I'm just going to do it because I can. What are you going to do about it? This supports the notion that I want to reiterate to you that I've mentioned before, and it's simply this. This applies to you if you are, particularly if you are living in the United States, you're a citizen of the United States, but it really applies to you in a lot of, uh, in a lot of nations. Some of you are in Western Europe, some of you are in Asia. It, it really applies to you. But particularly, if you are an American citizen, you are a tax-paying, law-abiding, God-fearing, hard-working American citizen who plays by the rules, minds your own business, tends to your own affairs, takes care of your, your loved ones, you need to understand once and for all, the United States government hates you. I want you to think about that a minute and assimilate that quickly. Your government hates you. You are their enemy. If you are a person who upholds the, 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 the principles of law and order, if you are a person who expects your government to abide by the Constitution, if you are a person who does play by the rules, you do work hard, you do pay the ta your taxes, you are the very sort of person that the United States government loathes. They hate you, and you, my friend, have a target on your back. You are public enemy number one. And it's time to wake up and understand that. And when, once you understand that, you need to start making or you need to start planning your life and that of your loved ones accordingly. Because our government is waging war on us. And the figurehead of this war is Donald Trump. Your government hates you, it is not your friend. You remember when Ronald Reagan said the, wor the words you never want to hear, hello? I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Well, <laughs> it is that way squared. It's so much worse now than when Reagan was the president. Now, I want to move on to Vladimir Putin. Oh, before I do that, let me, let me move on to this. Representative Massey, Thomas Massey of Kentucky, he's a good guy. He's one of the rare good guys in Congress. After, um, after Congress took the vote to pass this bill to send, I believe it was 60, 60 or $65 more billion dollars to Ukraine, 
and so many of the House members started waving Ukrainian flags, Representative Massey, I guess, took out his cell phone and he began to videotape all of these people waving Ukrainian flags in the well of the House, in the chamber, in the House chamber. Do you know that he was told by the sergeant at arms in the House of Representatives that what he did was illegal and that he was facing a fine of $500? Think about that for a minute. The members of the House were ra waving Ukrainian flags. Representative Massey videotaped this and put it up on Twitter. And the sergeant at arms said, you violated a rule and now you're going to pay a fine of $500. But the people who wave the flags, that's okay. You're facing no fine. What you did was fine and dandy. There's no problem with that. It's no problem for you American lawmakers, you American members of Congress sworn to uphold the American Constitution are standing in the chamber of the House of Representatives waving Ukrainian flags. But it's Thomas Massey who took pictures of you doing that that's in trouble. Now, the late news is um, Mike Johnson, to his credit, of course, to save face, I'm sure, has told Pro uh, Congressman Massey, you're not going to have to pay any fine. But where are the fines for the, for the flag wavers? Where are the fines for the people that were waving Ukrainian flags? Where is the sergeant of arms uh, notifying all of them that they're, they're facing sanctions or fines or you know, they, they've, they've broken the House rules. Is it not against the House rules to fly, fly the flag of a foreign nation on the floor of the House of Representatives? I don't know. That's an honest question. I don't know. But does it not, does it kind of turn your stomach a little bit to know that representatives of the House are flying the flag of a foreign nation? Not only that, but a nation as completely corrupt as Ukraine is? Now, I want to move on to Vladimir Putin because I want to ask this honest question. This is an honest question, and I, I would really like to get an honest answer, particularly from those of you watching me who are citizens, citizens of the United States. Why does the United States government hate Vladimir Putin? Can somebody answer that question for me? Why, why do we hate him? It's an honest question. I want to know the answer. I've got my own answers, but I want to know yours. Why do we hate, why does the government, as basically a matter of policy, why do we hate Vladimir Putin? Why is that? For what reason would we hate Vladimir Putin? Why do so many Americans hate Vladimir Putin and, of course, Russia? Why is that? Now, I don't mean to throw religion in your face, but the fact of the matter is Russia is largely, uh, in terms of, of uh, demographics, it is largely a Christian nation. It is presided over by a Christian president, President Putin. President Putin is a regular churchgoer. And during his tenure as president, did you know that over 25,000 new churches have been built in Russia as they came out of the Soviet Union days, the days of communism and atheism. Did you know under his leadership, over 25,000 churches have been built? How many churches have been built over under uh, Joe Biden's leadership, under Barack Obama's leadership, under Clinton or Bush's leadership? How many? I don't know but I know how many it is under Putin. There has been a resurgence, a revival, if you will, of not only Christianity, but of religion in Russia. I see that as a good thing, do you not? Freedom has flourished in Russia. Liberty has flourished in Russia. No, it's not perfect, not by, long, not by any stretch of the imagination. But these are wonderful developments in this burgeoning nation of Russia, a nation that is, continues to face threats every day from NATO, the ever-expanding NATO. You know, the same NATO that multiple American presidents post-Bush have told Putin we're never going to expand any further. 
lie after lie after lie. Why do we hate Russia? Why do we hate Vladimir Putin? Why is that? And if you're a Christian in America in particular, I would, I, I would ask you, why would you hate your fellow Christian? Why is that? Now, Daniel McAdams is a man who co-hosts a program on um, YouTube. I highly recommend. The name of the program is The Liberty Report, and it, it is uh, the video pro, it is the YouTube channel of Dr. Ron Paul. And Daniel McAdams is his co-host. And on Twitter, Daniel McAdams posted this question. Quote, why is it necessary to be anti-Putin? Are there no adults left out there? The United States would benefit greatly from simply pursuing constructive relations with other countries rather than pursuing this bizarre messianic obsession with remaking the rest of the world in our image by force. Remember, it was the United States that overthrew the elected Ukrainian government, not Russia. He is exactly right. That is Daniel McAdams. That was in 2004. You will remember that. I'm sorry, 2014, under Barack Hussein Obama, that we, the United States, overthrew the legitimately, democratically elected government of Ukraine and replaced the president with this puppet Zelensky. Why is that? Why do we have to be anti-Putin? Why do we have to remake all these governments and countries of the world, these sovereign nations? Why do we have to remake them by force? Now, Mike Lee is a senator from Utah, and he follows this particular theme on Twitter, and he says this, and I quote, pro tip number one, one can be anti-Putin and opposed to sending an additional $60 billion to Ukraine. Pro tip number two, those who equate opposition to sending an additional $60 billion to Ukraine with support for Putin, with support, who, let, me re, let me start over. Those who equate opposition to sending an additional $60 billion to Ukraine with support for Putin are imbeciles. In other words, he's saying if you oppose sending this money to Ukraine, that must, be your, that must mean you're pro-Putin. And Mike Lee says, if that's what you think, you're an imbecile. And he's exactly right. Folks, uh, you know what? We need to stop helping the CIA. They are the enemy of the state. And we need, as American citizens, citizens to stop helping them, stop defending them, stop being an apologist for them. You know what President Kennedy wanted to do to them, and that's in all likelihood why he got killed. Do you hear the gunshots behind me? My property borders a firing range. Life in Alabama, right? One more question before I go. Have you seen the videos and the images of the Muslims in America, in American towns, chanting death to America? Have you seen that? I've seen it in several different places. Muslims are holding rallies in cities across America and they are chanting death to America. I have a question for you. Would that be considered sedition? Could that be considered treason? Is it unreasonable for me as an American to say that we should have an expectation of people who live in America not to chant death to America? Is that unreasonable? And are the people who are chanting death to, to America, are they any different than politicians in Washington who are waving the Ukrainian flag in the chamber of the House? Could that also be sedition? Could that also be treason? Just asking the question. Hey, if you're a Putin hater, stop hating this Christian man. Stop hating on Russia. Understand 
that it's the American government that overthrew the duly elected government of Ukraine and understand if you'd like to educate yourself why the reasons Putin what it went into Ukraine actually are. I've detailed that countless times on this channel. To send more money to the money laundering scheme that is Kiev is unconstitutional, it is un-American, and it should not happen. And shame on you members of Congress that voted for this debacle, and shame on you members of Congress that voted to continue and expand FISA. Shame on you. Give me your comments down below if you would. I would appreciate that very much. Give me a thumbs up on the video and like this if you would. That would be fantastic. If you have not yet subscribed to the Trailer Trash Tim uh, channel, I invite you to do that right now. Thank you again for all the emails, the contacts, the buy me a coffee. The link is down below if you find value in this channel. Thank you for watching, everybody. This is Trailer Trash Tim. Listening to the gunfire, the sound of freedom. We'll see you soon.